What's up guys, your man Chef back in for another video and today we're making a quick one about Lil Yachty and this video is going to be one I think that I haven't seen many people make before. A lot of people talk about the follow for Lil Yachty, they talk about how he underperforms. I've done it at least three or four times. I talked in depth about open bank account, how I think that him basically feminizing himself is kind of a sad, desperate attempt for fame, but it didn't work. Um, but now I'm going into how Lil Yachty may be blameless in all of this. And that's because when Lil Yachty first started blowing up in 2016, with one night, of course, here in Minnesota around the end of the year, he was featuring I Spy and Broccoli. He was looking to promising to be one of the biggest new upcoming stars. But the XXL freshman list was a good list, but unfortunately, they kind of, he kind of got left behind. Kodak Black, Lil Uzi Vert, and 21 Savage went on to basically sell platinum records and some of you have number one singles and top ten singles. Meanwhile, Yachty slowly but surely saw the decline of his career. Now, I do hold Yachty 30% responsible, but I put 70% on it. The Joe Budden interview, the public perception of Yachty. A lot of people call him Lil Uzi Vert and Yachty. The destruction hip-hop is saying that them having red hair and tattoos, face tattoos, stuff like that was born in the industry. And it's basically like what... Nas and Ice-T and all these other rappers were doing to the dance, snap, crunk rappers, the, you know, the Soldier Boys, the Chingies, all of them, when they blamed them for the hip-hop. They did that to Yachty in 2017, 18, and he's never recovered. You see, we have multiple outlets coming at you saying that you're the new wave of hip-hop and how you're ruining the sound and how hip-hop will never be the same because you and Lil Vert, Kodak Black, 21 Savage, Ugly God, and others have came in the game and switched it up and made it worse than all time. You held accountable. But the thing was that Yachty didn't have. 21 Savage started having a strong fan base, and he had Metro Boomer on the side, and he had Future on the side. Lil Uzi Vert had a strong fan base building up from the north. Um, everybody loved Extra Tour Life when it came out. He built an even stronger fan base. He's known as being stylistic. His Marilyn Manson um, praising image. He was basically a cult of personality and still is one of the best selling rappers of the current day as eternal take so almost during the K first week. <laughs> of course we have to talk about Kodak Black. Without him going to jail, he arguably one of the biggest rappers in the game with uh three albums all going gold or higher. Um ZZ almost going number one, uh Tunnel Vision peaking at number six, debut number six, stayed in the top ten for five weeks. You have um No Flocking, which is three times platinum and the song's about 2014. It's a cult classic. Kodak Black has those street hits and he has those radio hits. So Kodak has ascended. But, and Designer, of course, on the XXL list, he didn't round up being anything. But that was already predicted. Yachty was predicted at least be something. So, and all, I think that's how Lil Yachty eventually fell off. And now it's currently, he can still chart in the top 20. Yes, but his album sales are lackluster, less than 30K, 40K at this point. His first album, though, it is responsible for a lot of his demise. When his first albums came out, Teenage Emotions, and they realized it's not going to be the same as the Yachty I got from one night, people realized there was no stock in Yachty. They realized they should stop investing in him. And that album and Lil Bo 2, those two albums are only ones that actually sold a decent amount. From there on out, Lil Yachty's basically seen terrible, terrible sales for first week opening numbers. And he's oversaturated Marco with nothing to prove. And then he had Lil Bo 3 come out this year. And he said he have another album coming out after this. And he's basically, I guess maybe he's trying to get away from QC, trying to drop a certain amount of albums. I don't know. It seems like he's good with QC, even though the Migos aren't. And that's Yachty's career, you know. Another big part of, like I said, what the QC thing is, Lil Baby is now doing it to the Migos and City Girls, but... The City Girls overtook Yachty Shine. Migos definitely overtook that. And that's another thing. Last part of the video. When Lil Yachty was out in 2016 and one night became a cult classic and started having views on YouTube, we had Minnesota come out. And when he's featured on Broccoli and I Spy, he was getting a lot of publicity. But you gotta remember, the Migos Bad and Bougie came out in late 2016 and became the number one best song, rap song of that year next to Humble. Then it came out with Slippery. Of course, T-Shirt, they featured on Katy Perry's song. Quavo started doing a lot of features in 2017. So a lot of the QC power got taken away. And not to mention Yachty's lead single for Teenage Emotions was Peekaboo, which the Migos was featured on. And they took the shine from that. Lil Yachty's diss track basically got took over by Quavo, as he said, 
um, if a nigga hit him, call him Joe Budden. So even Quavo got more smoke for those tracks than Yachty, and the diss was supposed to be from Yachty. So it's a combination of bad marketing. I'm, I'm not saying bad marketing. No, no. Yachty's been excellently marketed. Target commercials, How High 2. He's been on multiple award shows. Yachty has been marketed and sold to kids well. But when it's time for like the adults or the teenagers to scream about albums, it's not happening because... It's maybe a little pump type disconnect where you're colorful and bright and you're cool for the kids, but after teenagers, young adults, and people middle aged to older aren't gonna sit there and listen to some red haired guy that wears fingernail polish and has maybe one guy out every three or four years. So make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you think about this. Do you think that Lil Yachty fell off due to his circumstances and the media and other factors? Or do you think it's all Yachty's fault? I think it's a 30-70 split. 30% Yachty's fault for the content. And 70% it's not Yachty's fault because he had a complex interview. The Migos being in his way. QC might not put him as priority after that first album and do as well. And, of course, media outlets blame him for ruining um, hip-hop. When that's not the case, it was a lot of rappers that were doing the same thing he was doing at the time. I'm Chef from Off the Dome. I'll see you next time. Subscribe. Hit the bell on the right-hand side. Peace.